Hello guys and uh, welcome to David Madison the Guardian. I'm a modern day Jedi. You might say wizard, Jedi, shaman, whatever. Um, so I try to never miss an opportunity to practice telekinesis. So while I'm waiting, I'm kind of waiting here at the Safeway that's on uh, Route 119, right by the Starbucks, for my buddy to pick me up for work today. And what I tend to do is <clears throat> I tend to walk over here to this these set of trees here and practice the Qigong exercises, specifically beat uh, Ben Qigong, which is a series of eight exercises um, that you can learn about on YouTube from this guy named Damo Mitchell. He's written at least two books. Um, so a book to Taoist, um, Taoist uh, Nigong, and then and then he wrote like another book that's more comprehensive, which is called the Comprehensive Guide to Taoist Nigong. So, <clears throat> I believe in what's called starter exercises because sometimes you don't connect right away. It depends on <clears throat> it depends on if you're if you're feeling the energy or not already. Sometimes you're not. You know, I really I wasn't feeling too much of the energy, so I just took you know, some newspaper that I saw down on the ground there, and I hung it up. And I know from experience that something that's hanging, for me, that's lightweight, that has a lot of surface area, is easy for me to, to manipulate. And then, once I'm able to manipulate this, then I can look over here to maybe like a hanging vine. And I can make that vine move. As you see, the wind's starting to pick up. So then I might go over here to this stuff this is also hanging. It's a little denser. And so I'll practice, you know, working on like this guy right here. I zoom in. It's good to practice both um, area effects and more spec specificity, I think it's called. Um, once I feel that, then I might step over here to something even, even more dense. So I might have to work on the top. It's less dense of the plant itself and then work my way down. And of course that over there is now really going going well. And then I'll sink my energy into my legs and pull that energy up through my feet. 
Back up. I'll keep in mind that there's the cord tied to my feet, but also tied like to my tailbone going down into the center of the earth. And then there's a cord shooting up, up to the sky and beyond the sky even. But now I'm starting to feel the energy, okay? So now I can move thicker things right and it's it doesn't take a lot to move the thicker things because I've stirred up the energy um, I'm now I'm now in resonance so I can just kind of I can just kind of build on what I've already done but if I hadn't already if I had just come over here cold and tried to tried to move this tree, I might have been able to do it, but it would have probably taken me a long time. So this is a very thick branch, uh, or thick foliage on the branch. It's like an evergreen. It's not quite like a pine tree. It's more like a scrub tree. And this is without even doing any Qigong uh, this morning, but... I, I feel this is important to have what I call starter exercises. You start with something that you know you can you can do and you work your way up to tougher and tougher things and at some point those tough things now if you look over here it's not really moving anymore right you go over there newspapers just kind of sitting there okay now it's moving a little bit now that I'm paying attention to it but bush that I was trying to move, or was moving, the things hanging on the, hanging on the fence, none of that's moving, um, now that I'm focusing on it, that vine is moving, now other things are moving around the fence now right in front of me this this tree branch that's right above me is just the tips of it are moving okay so starter exercises you can do those outside but you can do them inside too um, I believe in having core exercises that are easy for you something like spinning a side wheel and then progressing to harder and harder things so for example you spin a piece of tin foil small a small piece of tin foil on a on a side wheel then what you do is once you feel in resonance with that then you put a jar over it then you practice putting your hands on the jar and trying to continue its motion. Then you take your hands off the jar and try to continue its motion. Then you stroke the glass and try to see if you can get any motion, right? Then you take the jar off the tin foil, you take the tin foil, you invert it, and you stick it on like a, a sphere that's, that's sitting in something so it won't roll. And then you try to spin the tin foil or rock it up and down. You either try to spin it or you try to rock it, try to make it vibrate while it's balanced on the sphere. 
practice with different size spheres because different size spheres will have smaller and smaller uh, points of contact. The smaller the sphere, um, the smaller the, the point of contact, which means the less inertia you're going to experience. Then I might do something like paper on a side wheel, paper inside the jar, paper spinning on the sphere. Then what I might do is a little uh, uh, tin foil standing up that's bent slightly so it can stand up. Or maybe it's bent on the bottom like an L shape and the short part of the, the L shape is on the desk and then the longer part is sticking up so it's got this springy feeling to it. Then I might do that with paper. You see how I'm building, I'm building up the skill set and I'm, I'm building up the orientation to be harder and harder and harder. All right, that's it for now, guys. Until um, next time, peace and be well.